Welcome back to Historic Investments. Today, we're going to talk about a fascinating Colt 1903. And you're probably saying, so what could be so fascinating about a Colt 1903? Colt made almost 600,000 of these guns and they're all in the United States. There are five variations. It's very well detailed. What do you mean something special? But yes, indeed, this is a very special and super rare Colt 1903. Well, it's a 1903 copy, but let's look at it in detail because if you find one of these, you will be the envy of every single Colt collector. And Remember, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. So you're a serious collector. You pick up this Colt 1903. You, of course, want the best possible condition gun. You uh, make sure that it's an original factory blue. You want a nice uh, Colt uh, pre-war blue. You don't want a jet black finish. You look at the slide legend. You make sure that none of the letters are rounded. You'll see it here. It says Colts. You see USA. You see patented 1903. You look at the rampant Colt here and make sure that all of the edges are sharp. Here's a serial number. And then you take a closer look right here. And this is where the, um, the gun's final inspection was marked, and this was marked after the gun was blued, so the edges right here should be nicely uh, welled up. Let's flip to the other side and take a brief overview of that. This is a side, of course, that collectors really like to see because it says, and we'll take a look right here, Colt Automatic and a caliber 32. You want to make sure it's a 32, not the 380. That'd be the Colt 1908. And you look at the rest of the markings, and this, just like the last proofing, this inspector marking should be welled up as it was struck after the, uh, after the blue was applied. Now, these are all things that every serious cold collector uh, likes to see. So now let's take a look at this really interesting uh, 1903 uh, cold copy, which I have to say was not made under license, but made in China during the warlord period, which was from roughly 1916 to uh, 1949. As you might expect, Colts then and now had a lot of name recognition, so it's not surprising that the Colt name was, um, was used on the copy. So first of all, let's take a look at the size. As you can see right here, the uh, Colt copy is a little bit smaller than the original. It's about a 7 eighths inch or 7 eighths inch a scale gun. Let's take now, we're going to move down here and just take a look at the slide legend. You can see the uh, the slide legends as we previously reviewed. It does have the word Colt on it and as you might expect since it is a copy, people do want to reference that it is a very special gun. So special is kind of spelled phonetically, not quite right, but I think it's, it's good enough to pass, especially on an early Monday morning or Friday afternoon. Interesting that the word national National was used on the copy, but it's not surprising because uh, Fabrique Nationale of Belgium was uh, responsible for selling an awful lot of guns into China. So many of the uh, guns that were copied in China have the word either Fabrique or Fabrique Nationale. So why not put the word Nationale on the gun? And of course, to emphasize that this particular cult was made in the United States, you have to put USA there. Unfortunately, or maybe surprisingly, the right side of the slide doesn't have any markings. And we just kind of reviewed the original guns that says Colt Automatic and with the caliber. So uh, this one is devoid of any markings and the caliber is not marked on the gun in any um, way, although this uh, gun is in a 32 uh, ACP, which was an exceedingly popular caliber in China during the Warlord area. Here's the uh, serial number, 52256. Uh, uh, you could look this up in the uh, Colt uh, reference library, but I can guarantee this gun has like nothing to do, the production of this gun has nothing to do with uh, Colt's production. Uh, w one of the things that I found the most interesting as some of the construction details. So, for example, the uh, Colts, as you might have might know, um, have this uh, the safety that was mounted on the tang. This gun's got a mid-frame safety, very much like the uh, Spanish guns of the period, oh, Spanish, and also some of the Italian guns. But even more interesting is how it's constructed. I mean, as collectors, we like to find guns that are you know made of forged parts. And and while part of this gun you know may have been forged, what's a, what, what's fascinating is it was basically constructed as a number of pieces that were braced together. So, for example, we can take a look at the slide, and you know, let me um you know put the uh, reposition the gun here so you can maybe see the uh, this portion of the slide a little bit more clearly. And you can see that this back part of the slide was actually two pieces of metal. Here's one piece right up here, and here's a second piece. You can see that there's a tempering or a color difference. I'm um, even more pronounced. Let's look at the back part of the frame. Here we would expect to see some uniform polishing. It would be a single forged part. But look, right here you can see um, there's a piece here, there's a central piece, and you can see if I turn it just a little bit, you can see this um, uh, bronze braze mark going all the way down here, right? It starts up here, goes all the way down here, same as on this side. So this frame was actually made of uh, several pieces, and the same type of braze construction was also applied to the slide. It's not just this piece here. 
Let's take a look at this uh, portion of the forward slide. Maybe we can focus in a little bit here. And you can see this, uh, these right here, there are actually two braze lines that involve the uh, forward part of the slide. So this was a pieced together gun. And another portion of the gun that was pieced together, let me move it here and see if you can uh, uh, just kind of focus right here. You can see the forward part of the trigger guard was again, it was a uh, piece together and here's the braze line in this area. And uh, there's another little um, uh, area that was brazed and attachment to the frame. And if we kind of look at the forward part of the front strap or just the front strap again, as you might expect, this, these are the mirrored braze marks that we just saw on the back strap. Here again, here's the braze line here and here is the second braze line in this area. Of course, there are going to be some other differences. There are going to be some differences in the grips. There are going to be some differences in the, um, in the contour of the magazine release. Um, in fact, the gun is pretty darn different than a Colt 1903. The, the main things that are kind of keeping it as an unlicensed copy, of course, it's got the Colt legend here, and it's got the, uh, the same, same general size and configuration as a Colt 1903. There you have it, a fascinating Colt 1903 or almost Colt 1903. A very interesting copy, as you know. Copying is the most sincere form of flattery. Of course, it's better if you copy things just exactly right, but again, close enough, especially for the times. So, if you find one of these, good luck. I'm sure you'll be the envy of every one of your cult, fellow cult collectors, and I'm sure you'll be the only one at the Cult Collectors Association with such a pistol. So with that in mind, good luck and good collecting.